You, you didn't talk about the cuts on Friday, did you? Uh, I'm not sure if we did or not. I don't think we did, actually. Well, all I know is I was aghast when they cut Sanga. I know. This is hurting you. What are what, what are you thinking? Well. And then they cut Sanga. The, the ones I was shocked by were Sanga. And then, um, uh, who was the other uh, one? Beer? Oh, no. Um, you know, Von Wagner. Yeah, well. That things about. were trending that way with him. They were, they? but it was because they booked him horribly. It was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you could not book a guy worse when trying to get him over than Von Wagner. Well, Giov- well, you know what? They they weren't trying to get over Giovanni Vinci, but my God, you give him a, a new look. He has that good match with, I think it was, uh, was it Phantasma? I think it was in Santos Escobar, and, and they bring him up to the main roster, and he always was the third guy, and... Things were not looking good after last night for him, but uh, Cameron Grimes today is one. Well, that that's what I'm going to get to. Cameron Grimes, but man, he got cut as well, and uh, you know he had just recently, you know, one of those things where in the old days you knew he was doomed, but you thought nowadays, well, maybe not. You know, it's him and Braun Breaker. He doesn't even get an entrance. He's just standing there in the ring, and then Braun murders him. So, uh, and he got cut as well. Now he, he surprised me as well because. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic worker, great baby face. People loved him, and you know what's weird is, uh, you know, Dave was talking about this last night. So, do you remember like, it literally was probably two years ago. One day I was watching SmackDown, and there's Von Wagner backstage. Remember that? Yeah, Zion Quinn, him, yeah, a couple. Of well, Zion like that. Quinn got drafted, and then we like literally never saw him again. That was that was weird enough, but no, they they had they had him on TV in like three backstage segments, and then we never saw him again. Okay, yeah. so apparently Zion Quinn, and I mean all these, all of them really, but Von Wagner and and. Uh, who else was I talking about? It was Vaughn and... Uh, Zylee uh, and then... No, but um, I, I think the most surprising ones Peter were... Sanga. Well, I, I, the two that... Uh, Zion and, and Wagner, okay, were the two that I was referring to the day was talking about. They were considered main roster talent. <laughs> like, oh. Zion got called up once and was never seen again, but he was considered main roster talent. Well, he got an ass whipping by Braun Breaker, so he got one going out the door. They literally put Vaughn on TV three times in a backstage segment, and then he just went right back and was a regular on NXT, but he was considered a main roster. Sure. <laughs> and so, like, <laughs> apparently, like, the reason he was cut was because he was main roster and they weren't doing anything with him on the... Well, I was like, what? I don't know about that. Well, okay, what's going on here? I don't. I what's don't going think on that here? That's, I don't think that, that doesn't that's make any case. sense. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Corey says Zion was sad to see he looked like a star. Yes, bro. I watched a lot of Zion Quinn, <laughs> and that's what he had was he looked like a star. He that's wasn't it. getting in the ring. Nope. He was not improving ever, and you know, I just don't get it, dude. I don't Brian, get yeah, yeah, any I, of this. I get it. I completely get it. I completely get it, and, and you understand why, too, if you really think about it. From a rational point of view, they have all those guys in, N- in the NIL system. They have all these people that they're developing with their own hands. They have people that you can bring in, new people like Julia, who are newer to the system. I don't think, in some cases, this is a referendum on the wrestler. It's a matter of, you know, with Cameron Grimes... You know what? We we can't see in the immediate future when we're going to be able to shuffle you in in the next 6, 12 months. Even though you have talent, we have all of these other people. We have all of these other people we're trying to develop. Same thing with Von Wagner. You know, at his size, with his pedigree, being a second-generation wrestler, with the fact that he's got some establishment there. If he leaves and pulls a Drew McIntyre or a Cody Rhodes and does a great job on the indies, becomes a monster, because he is a monster. If he walked into TNA right now, he would be a monster on the roster. And if they're able to do something, maybe he can come back. I don't think in some cases, you know, talented people are going to get cut sometimes just because 
they get shuffled out of the system. That's why in the territory days, it was great because you could move on to somewhere. It's what Adam Copeland, there's a story on the front page that got posted up today about having more than one flourishing company, a positive for all wrestlers. Yeah, because you need a place for wrestlers to work. Look at Nick Nemeth. Look at Dolph Ziggler and all those times you could have done X, Y, and Z. You could have did more with him. He's not a shot wrestler. He's able to go into TNA and do things. He's able to go to New Japan, CMLL, and do things. So I hope that's the case for Cameron Grimes. And I think in the case of some people like Zia Lee or Zion uh, Quinn, you know, they just, at some point, you got to, like, cut bait with some of these folks because you're just backed up with too many Well, here's the thing. I mean, the, potential. listen, I, I, I listen. It's the same thing with, with AW and WWE, okay? You can't just hire everybody forever. No. Okay? So, like, AEW has so many people under contract. And remember we found out that, like, Harlan, what was his name in, in AEW? <laughs> like, he got released a while. It was like, he's been under contract for the last eight months where he's just been gone. Well. It's like, AEW, I don't like to see anybody fired. But the fact is, if AEW is going to keep hiring people, they got to fire some people. You just have to. I mean, Otherwise, you're paying people to do absolutely nothing. Yes. And and then you want to justify that you're paying this guy so he's on TV, but someone else isn't. It's and like, look, no, stop. Well, hold on. Too, so then in ahead. WWE, it's like they're about to have a draft. They're about to call up some people to the main roster. There's only so many spots, okay? You can say, well, you can make a spot for, you know, 200 people, but you can't, okay? It's going to be, it's going to suck. You got a finite number of spots for such and such number of people, and so people are going to be cut. But my point is, I get it. You know, Veer and Sangha is a, is a heel tag team. It was a gimmick from 1994, okay? But yeah. of the two, Sangha, you know, when he had that run in NXT and he was the baby face and he was giving everybody advice and he was a spiritual leader, he was great. He had, he, he had something. And Cameron Grimes was a fantastic worker, and he connects with the crowds in these matches. He has something. And uh, and Von Wagner, you know, I'm actually kind of okay with Von being released because he can go and do some stuff and come back. But, you know, he had something as well. Zia Lee really wasn't showing anything. Zion Quinn was showing nothing. You know, Jinder had run his course. You know, it's like I get some of these, but some of them I don't get. Well, but. Veer, they never, they cut him off at the knees, you know. They actually had him play into the fact he was riding around in a Mercedes and he had this, you know, busted down Rolex on and all this stuff. And it was like, okay, this is a new take on an Indian wrestler. And this is a new look and, and a new way to do things. And then all of a sudden, they flipped him back and they put him and Sangha together. Sangha, who was a good guy, you know, and actually portrayed that role better, but they hook them all together. And then, as you mentioned, it became a gimmick right out of 1994 again. And it just, they never, it, look, it, there are some projects and that's another thing with this. There are going to be some people that they look at and see and go, we love these guys. There's probably a Cameron Grimes fan, a Trevor Lee fan right now sitting in the Carolinas that is looking at Johnny Gargano going, why do they love him so much? Because they do. They like him to do and portray a certain role. They have projects that they like. They're not going to be able to hit on everybody. And again, the more people getting out there, again, we'll see what happens with TNA because I don't know how well they did. Attendance-wise was rough. Let's see how they do with the pay-per-view and see how much money they continue to throw into things. But, you know, having another place out there for some of these people to work and, you know, again, be bigger fish in smaller ponds is a good thing. President Rob, a great name here, Dexter Loomis. What? I for totally forgot about that guy. Now, now, where has he been? I don't know, but he's not going to be answering his phone now that we vanished off out. the face of the earth. Is what happened you know? to that guy? Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, 
As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.